it's that time of the evening again where to do a review on a beer. Yeah, because this channel is called Jared Reviews Drinks and Stuff. And I'm going to review drinks and stuff right now. <coughs> this time around, as promised, I said I was going to be doing a lot of Scottish stuff. Because I went to Scotland uh, last month and I sort of... I was, I was in a hotel in Leith, which was right next to a big Asda superstore. And it had a full beer aisle and there was just loads of Scottish stuff there. Um, I was like, I might buy one or two. I ended up buying six. So, uh, you know, quite a few there. This was one of them. Bellhaven 80 shilling. Now, I've already done a Bellhaven IPA before. This was the one with the green label on it, and it was quite nice. This one obviously has a blue label, and it's uh, just like a traditional Scottish ale. And um, yeah, it's a 3.9%, which is not that strong. It's about the same as Carl, I think. And uh, yeah, it's, um, it's called 80 shilling because, you know, once upon a time in Britain, we didn't use pound sterling, we used like shillings and stuff. Well, we did use pound sterling, but you know, we, it was, it, we just did it differently. We had like fucking shillings and half pence and sixpence and all that stuff. I don't remember it because I wasn't around. When I was around, when I was born, it was we'd already moved to a new system where we had like you know pounds and pence and that's it. You know fucking ten bob fucking Billy Bobble bollocks. You know that that's that's before my time. Don't expect an educated fucking you know description of all of it because I wasn't there. But yeah, um, this is. Belhaven Brewery is 80 shilling and Belhaven Brewery is obviously a Scottish one. Uh, I'm trying to figure out where it's from. I can't remember where it doesn't say. But yeah, the, I know it's somewhere in Scotland. Uh, nah, it doesn't say. So yeah, let me just let me just show you what it looks like. So what you've got is two lions holding up the 80 shilling with obviously the Belhaven Brewery logo. With a, another lion inside a saltire, that's the Scottish flag for those who don't know. And here's a thistle as the bottle tap for all you bottle tap enthusiasts, and I know there are many. Probably. But yeah. And it's got all shit written on the bottle as well, on the neck too. I'll read the neck bit first. Bellhaven, or the beautiful harbour, nestles among the rolling barley fields. Scotland's beautiful east coast, so it's closer to Edinburgh than Glasgow, to say the least. Uh, for nearly 300 years, we have brewed in this place using only the finest ingredients. Good to know. Continuing that long tradition, this range of speciality beers each has its own unique taste and style, and together they represent the very best of Scottish brewing. Well, obviously, if you've got a line of, like, brews, you'd want them to be a bit unique and differently tasted. If every one of them tasted the same, it'd be a bit fucking pointless, wouldn't it, you know? But, yeah. The shilling names typical of traditional Scots ales refer to the historic wholesale price of a cask. 80 shillings were top-shelf stuff. So only the best ingredients are used in our classic 80 shilling. With three local malts and two hop varieties creating a rich copper coloured beer with malty, toffee and soft fruit flavour character. Oh yeah, it's in Dunbar East, Lothian. And Lothian is where Edinburgh is so it's not far from Edinburgh at all. So yeah, this is the Bellhaven Brewery from Dunbar in Scotland. Dun 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 bar. So yeah. And yeah, doesn't really say much else other than it's beer it's brewed there, but it's also brewed in Orebro Urebro, Sweden. Which is great. And uh try to look see what's yeah, nah. Just gonna say, it says, it just says malted barley, it doesn't say the uh, anything else oh yeah by the way um no it doesn't you got to really close um 
yeti. 80 shillings. There's, there's a, you, I'm going to try and zoom this in a bit. If you look there where my finger is, you'll see the 80 with some kind of like dot on the line. That symbolised the shilling. That's what a shilling used to look like. For all of you people who don't know what old fashioned British currency looks like and consists of. So yeah, let's just get our bottle top and let's just pop it open because why not? Oh, it fizzed up a bit. Let's be a bit careful, 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 Colin. And Colin, you've got no reason to complain because we were careful there. So yeah, let's, let's get Zach Dingle a little bit of Bellhaven 80 shilling. Gluggen, 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 gluggen. Okay. Now I got told that this is a heady beer. Um, it kind of is, but not that much. But it looks like a nice thick head. And it's very dark. It's a it's a very dark copper colour. In fact, it's almost maroon. That's how dark it is. And the carbonation, moderation, but it's not like bubbling up and down. Like anti-gravity shit, it's just sort of staying in one place. So that's interesting. So that's what it looks like. And the hair hasn't dissipated yet, which is good news. It's still there. So, yeah, whoever told me that there was a heady beard, they were far off. So, yeah, then, that's what it looks like. So, let's see if it really is a rich copper coloured beer with malty toffee and soft fruit character. Let's sniff, shall we? Okay. Okay, yeah. Um, yeah, I'm definitely getting the fruit. Yeah. It's like a sort of spicy, peppery Horlicks, so it's a mixture of malt and hop. Because that's where the, the peppery bitterness comes from, is the hop and the malt. It's like Horlicks and all that shit, shiznit. But yeah, it's... So yeah, I'm definitely getting a fruit vibe of it. Like a sort of date. Um, or some kind of like fig. Because I have had figs in the past and they have a bit of a smell on them. It's, it's a nice smell. I've had fig rolls in the past. I used to really like them when I was little, but after a while I just sort of ate too many and got ad nauseum and thought, oh fuck this, I don't know anymore. And since then I haven't really liked them. The smell is not too bad. It's like cappuccino and coffee. I like the smell of that, but the taste of it does not, does not inform me. I don't drink coffee at all. I drink tea and Horlicks and drink and chocolate, that's about it. So yeah, we know what it looks like. We know what it smells like. Yes, I know I'm wearing an Evan shirt again. We lost. But we lost 3-1 to so a Man United side that's in very good form. And it's in the cup. So, you know, we're not getting relegated from that game at least. Yeah. <clears throat> so yeah, we know what it looks like. We know what it smells like. But the most important part is obviously Mr. Tasty McWasty. Now, will it be... Bellhaven, 80 shilling, or Bellhaven, this is killing my enthusiasm, because it tastes so bad. There's only one way to find out. Bottoms up, and up your bottoms. Here we go. Maltiness was there, the hoppiness not so much, but the the toffee flavour, which I didn't really detect that first all that much, that hits as soon as you taste it. And, um, and you get a bit of a sort of like a slightly metallic aftertaste when you swallow it, which is a bit shit like, but you know, I, I don't really, you know, I've never been a big fan of that. But, um,
Yeah. And in fact, I'm getting the metallic mixed with that date flavour. So the date scent is now a flavour as well. It mixes together towards the end. So it's, I mean, it, it's a bit of a point down for that because I just want the date flavour, you know. You know, I don't really want that metal just sort of like shoving its fucking ore in where it doesn't belong to me and like, you know, it, it's, it's like, you know, like when, um, you know, you're, uh, you're trying to like watch a game of football and I'll tell you all about your game of rugby or whatever and then you get a knock at the door and you think, who the fuck's this? And you answer it and it's like some cunt who wants to talk about Jesus, you know what I mean? That, that's what it's like, you know, it's, it's, it's shoving the little metallic thing when it's not welcome you don't want it you know you just want the date after taste or maybe a bit of caramel but no you can't but uh yeah another thing is that the taste is a bit fleeting as well you put it in your mouth and you're like mm, yeah you act like it at first and then out of nowhere it's just gone uh, mouthfeel wise it's really good you can't fault the mouthfeel it's just tingling it in every single spot and um, it tastes like and it feels like something that is way more than 3.9 percent it's i mean if you were to tell me that this was five percent or maybe even a little bit more i'd believe you because it does something about it. it's too it's it's not light it's heavy you know, it, it feels like something that, you know, you couldn't ask this as a session beer. Just, I don't know, there's just something about it, you know. But, um, yeah, it's, I mean, it's ideal if, you, I mean, if you're in like a little pub in Scotland and you just want to relax and then get out the rain and you just want to just chill out and watch whatever's on the telly <coughs> or have a nice rhythm conversation with a barman or something, then... I would suggest this because it's really good for that. But uh, I mean, is it something that like I'd proactively seek out? Um, mm, maybe it's 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 not the best beer I've ever had, but it's not definitely not the worst. I mean, I think that a seven out of ten rating would be fair. I think you know. So yeah, I'm gonna go for seven out of ten. Uh, the good things are obviously the sense of good, the initial taste is good, albeit a bit fleeting. Um, the caramel mixes well with the maltiness of it all. But the aftertaste of the, the dates, which is spoiled by a bit of metal. Which, mm, I don't know why there's metal, because I got it from a glass bottle, as you can see. If I got it from a can, fair enough, you could say, oh yeah, yeah, it's the can that's making it happen, but it's not. Um, well, yeah, I've had, I've had way less. So, yeah, all in all, 7 out of 10. You know, if you want to try it, by all means, uh, you might enjoy it. You might not. But I thought it was okay. So, yeah, all in all, 7 out of 10. Bell Haven, 80 shilling. Yeah. And it wasn't smooth, neither. It says rich and smooth, and it wasn't smooth. Because it's tingly, and it's got a, a bit of a kick to it. And there's also a slightly hoppy, peppery taste, which diminishes like that. It, it comes and it goes. I would have preferred to have kept that a bit more. Rather not. 7 out of 10. Anyway, that concludes tonight's video. I'm a little bit tired because I didn't get much sleep last night. So I'm not pissed because this is the first drink I've had tonight. Or I, I, I've had some Yule Log on a cup of tea before. <laughs> that's, how, that's how hardcore I am. So yeah, uh, but there'll be more to come, um, and I'll probably be a bit more pissed when I do that because, you know, why not, it's alcohol. So yeah, that concludes tonight's video, I hope you've enjoyed it, I've had a okay time, and I'll be back with more, more Scottish stuff because I did sort of splurge, didn't I, when I went to Leith that time, and um, I'll be coming soon. In the meantime, I'll be signing out, take care everyone.